start by making some brief comments about the market activity today, uh, following the US downgrade uh, last week and the European debt problems. You will all see what happened in the New Zealand markets today and other markets in Asia as they have opened for the week. Uh, while such volatility is unwelcome, New Zealanders should take some confidence from the fact uh, that the New Zealand economy is in more of a structurally sound situation than either the United States or Europe. A stand and pause downgrade of the United States credit rating shows we continue to live in an unusually risky and uncertain global environment. Since we came into office, this government has focused on debt and managing spending. This approach is shown in all three budgets we have delivered. Recent events have provided further evidence uh, that the government is moving in the right direction by putting such emphasis on getting our debt down, controlling spending and ensuring our financial system is sound. The government is getting top on top of debt by keeping it below 30% of GDP. Uh, we're one of the first uh, developed countries to be back in surplus, we believe, by 2014-15, if not earlier. And I repeat that the government is committed to responsible fiscal management. Just in terms of future focus, I'd like to update you on the early impact of our future focus benefit reforms. You remember that in March last year, Social Development Minister Paula Bennett and I unveiled details of these reforms, and after passing into law, they took into effect in September of last year. At the heart of the benefit changes is the national-led government's belief that those New Zealanders who can work should be working. To recap briefly, two of the major planks of the future focus reforms were the following. Firstly, requiring people on the unemployment benefit to reapply after 12 months and to have a comprehensive work assessment each time they do so. The second major plank was really introducing part-time work obligations for DPB recipients whose youngest child is aged six or over. These work obligations required people to be available for part-time work of at least 15 hours per week and accept suitable job offers or to be undertaking work-related training. Today I can tell you that these two moves are already having a very positive impact. The first change was to require people on the unemployment benefit to reapply for it after one year. And that just uh, literally means when somebody's been on the unemployment benefit for 12 months, they have to come into work and income and reapply by proving they're still eligible for support rather than just continuing to automatically receive it. Since making that change, 7,400 people have gone off the dole, according to our latest figures. About half of the 7,400 people who have gone off the dole didn't complete the reapplication process. More than 2,000 of the remainder were already in work, and 1,400 either failed the work test, were in study, or had left the country. So in just the first nine months of operation, the simple act of forcing people to reapply for the unemployment benefit has seen 7,400 people fall off the dole list. That is a saving to the taxpayer of more than $6 million just to the end of March, and another $3.5 million is expected to be saved through this reapplication process by October. The second part of the reforms I'm updating you on today is the requirement for part-time work obligations for DPB recipients whose youngest child is aged six or over. We know that the labour market is strengthening and I do need to point out that it's difficult to disentangle the impact of that from the effects of work testing. But what we do know is that prior to the future focus changes, there were 13,700 people on the DPB who are doing some part-time work. There are now 15,300 people who are doing some part-time work, so that's 1,600 more DPB recipients who are engaged in work. The proportion of those on the DPB who, who are on some part-time work has increased in just a few months, and that's a very positive start. There are other aspects to the future focused reforms which are just beginning, including changes for sickness beneficiaries, and it will be a few months before we'll see the impact of these. To put this into context, the future focus changes uh, rebalance obligations and support to put the focus squarely on work. Uh, they are a precursor to further, more substantial welfare reforms that will flow from the work of the Welfare Working Group, which reported to the government in February. 
I have a strong commitment to the safety net that welfare provides, and I believe in a welfare system that supports people when they are most in need. Must also, though, encourage those who can work to get back to work. Getting back to work is the best way for people to get ahead. Long-term welfare dependency locks people into a life of limited income and limited choices, and that is not fair on them or their children. On a wider scale, it's also the case that as a country, we need to, uh, a strong, productive workforce to get our economy growing faster. That way we can all share in the great opportunities that are ahead of us. Just in terms of ministerial activity and my activity this week, tomorrow I'm at caucus at question time. On Wednesday, I'm meeting the Prime Minister of Tonga and I'm attending uh, the PM's Pacific Youth Awards in the Banquet Hall. On Thursday, I'm in Auckland, where, amongst other things, I'll be speaking at the Auckland University here at the Pacific Islands Forum. On Friday, I'm in Christchurch and then go to Wellington to attend the National Party Conference, which will dominate the weekend. I'll be speaking to the conference in the usual slot uh, late Sunday morning. Just in terms of the House, uh, this week in the House, the Government intends to complete the committee stage, the preparation and <coughs> estimates bill, before proceeding to a third reading. The Government also intends to make further progress on the Electoral Administration Amendment Bill uh, number two. So is it <coughs> a conclusion that those 